Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part 12 of our .NET full stack series. And in the previous video, we saw like how we can make use of result pattern in our clean architecture. Okay. So in the last video, we have created this result folder and inside that we have added this result class, the T result class and the error type constant and this error. So if you have missed that video, then I will highly recommend you guys to go back and watch all the previous part and then you can start with this video. All right. So now in this video, we are going to take a look at how can we create our API for login. Okay. So if you remember, right. So for creating of creation of the API, our repository of user is already ready. Now we have to just create our services, which is inside this application layer. So if you remember, we have this I authentication service and I have this created this method in the interface, which is login async, which has a login request. And this login request is nothing but inside the model. We have a request and this is how our login request looks like. For example, if you are trying to do login, you will have email and password. Okay. Which will be input from the user. Okay. So now what we will do, right? We'll try to use this service inside our services folder. We have to implement that particular method logic over here. So first thing we will do the null check over here. So what we'll do, we'll say if your login request is null, then we have to return the result. So let's remove this and we can add our own return and we'll say that result dot failure okay result dot failure and inside that you have to specify your auth error and we don't have invalid login request so we'll, what we'll do right we'll copy this and let's go in your auth error and inside this we will try to add that okay so public static error invalid login request and we can say that invalid login request and now if you go back here and then you can just say that okay auth error dot invalid login request Okay, so that's what you have did here. And let me make this as an async method because we will be using the await for that. Okay, so this is what the first line was all about. We are checking the login request is null. If it is null, then you have to send failure. So we can use of this as well is. Okay, now second thing what you have to do, right? I can do, if you remember the destructuring, right? There's something in Shishap what you do, which is the tuple. So this is what I want to create. So I can just pass in the login request and I can say that, okay, from this login request, take this email and password. Okay, and just below that, what I will have to do, right? I'll have to check if my user. So I did where user equals to, and then I'm saying get user by email async. Okay. And in the next line, I'll have to do the validation for this if user exists or not. Okay. If you remember, right, this will return a nullable value. If you remember this get user by email async, this can return a null user. Okay. So I will put up a check here. If my user is null. Okay. If this is null, then I can return a failure while saying invalid login request. No, this is wrong. What I'll do, right. I'll create one more here request, which is user not found. Okay. And this is not a validation error. This is going to be a not found error. And we can say that user not found user not found. Okay. Something like that. And this we can use it over here. So now auth error dot user not found. Okay. Now this makes more sense to me. All right. So now this is what it will return or else if you got that, then what you will have to do, right? You have to validate the password, what user have sent. So for that, what you will do, you will check for if your user dot password. Okay. If your password is not matching, then you can have one more error over here, which is that invalid credential or something like that. So I can say public class error, and this will be invalid password or something like that. Okay. And over here, right, this can be a validation error. So I can say that the password is incorrect or you can say invalid password. Okay. And now this, you can use it over here. So if the password is not matching, then I can say this is invalid password error. Okay. So that's why I told you that now we are beautifully trying to document our error inside this auth error file. Okay. And now if everything is okay, right, then what you, you will be doing, right, then you will be creating a token for the user. Okay. So we can create a token on this line, but we don't have that at the moment because that is a separate video where I will demonstrate about what is a JWT token and why is it important and how we can create a JWT token in .NET project. Okay. So this is what I'm just doing at a dummy at the moment will be replaced. Okay. Will be replaced later. All right. Now what we can do, right? If everything is okay, then you will have to send a result or dot success. You can send in your token from here or you can, if you want, you can create your own object, which you want to send. Okay. It's all up to you. For example, if I want to generate some new value, for example, where result, 
okay you can try to create something like this i can create a token and you can create it for a username okay we can just say new okay you can create a login response if you want but i am not giving any type at the moment i'm just saying new and all that and this is what you can do it from here okay and now this result you can pass inside this and that's about it and once you pass this value right this auth controller now can use that so i can say where where response equals to await authentication service dot login async and now you will have something here so if the response is failure so you can return the bad request response with this response what you got from this service or else you can send the success response inside this okay now let's save the changes and let's see the magic of dot net if this is working or not Okay, so now what I'll do, right? I'll just close this. I'll try to build my application, .NET build. All right, the build is success with zero errors. And now I will try to run my application from here. So let's click on run and debug, and this will run the application. So first thing first, I'll have to register with a good name. If I remember, right? I think I have did that already. Let me go here and check in my previous request. Oh, there is nothing. So let me go ahead and create a new user. So I'll create with my name. All right, let me copy this email because I will be using that to do login and the password I'll keep as string and my username I will keep it as yshashi30, okay? And I click on execute. So my registration is done. Can you see I'm getting a value that user register successfully with all this body response body. And now what I'll do, right? I'll go inside your login logic, click on try it out. Can you see I have this email? So I'll paste this and the password was string itself and I click on execute. Moment I did execute, right? Can you see what I got? I got this good looking object from backend that now the value I have a token inside this for this particular username and is success is true, is failure is false and there is no error. Okay. And that's how we are trying to send the response object in the UI and the Angular will have a structured response body for all my API response. Okay. So this is what my goal was to create something well structured, which can be used in Angular as well. Okay. So that's, this is how we have created the login logic in our project okay so now you have got the fair idea about how this flow is gonna work for us for the upcoming api creations as well so what are our first step is we first always go and create something in the controller we'll have our api endpoint then in the application layer we will go and create the interface and then we will implement that interface in this service and that's how you will try to communicate from controller to application and what is the logic of application here so application is nothing but it is calling your repository because repository has all the data access thing okay so this is what the flow i was talking about from the start by using clean architecture which we can achieve now let me try to do some failure result on this login because i also want to test the wrong scenario here so for example let me change the password from string to string one two which is incorrect you know right and now if i try to execute let's see what happens the moment i do execute right i am able to get a response status code is 400 and it is giving me that invalid password with this validation error code okay but what about if i say my password is correct but my email is incorrect correct for example there is no user with y 301 you can also go and check over here in this uh, table as well can you see i just have these four users and now i'm trying to do a get Okay, let's try to do a login. Sorry. So if I click on execute, can you see what happens now? It says that user not found. But one thing I'm not liking here that if the user is not found, my status code is 400. Okay, which is not correct, right? So what we will do right in the next video, we will try to see how we can fix something which is broken at the moment in our result pattern. All right, because we need to have a proper status code return like whenever there is something because if it is not found, then I should not set 400. It should be 404 correct and if my authentication fails if it is forbidden it should give me the correct status code like 403 401 and whatnot all right so we will be talking about this in the next video where this will be fixed all right so that's it from this today's video and in this video we saw how we can create a login api and we also saw the flow of our project from where to where it is going all right I hope this video was helpful. If you find it helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and do share it with your friends as well. Okay. And if you need the source code for this project, then you can head over to this link and you can download it from this particular link. All right. And if you have any other suggestions for me, like what I should do next in my video, then do let me know that in the comment so that I will be definitely going to follow all your good feedbacks. 
all right so until next time see you guys bye bye and happy coding